there's, there's a lot of those iconic places that are in Ireland and they eat and drink and everything in them. There has been so much conversation about Rosie O'Grady's here in New York because it actually closed. And, uh, you know, Mike Carty said, hey, I'm going to get it open again. And Frankie Dwyer and Pete Fitzpatrick and Mike Carty, they got together again. And, you know... Rosie O'Grady's has so many memories for so many people oh, sure. here in the city. Place of, it used yeah. to be across from the Sheridan. That's right. right. And now it's just one block away from it is. So, you know, these guys are talking about, you know, going to New York and sending stuff to New York. We have stuff here in New York. We can go to Rosie O'Grady's. There you go. And I know they were, and they, the good timing for them is they were able to open by St. Patrick's yes. Day. Yes, they swore they would get it open, and they did some job to get it open. And talking about timing, we have the parade almost over our shoulder here. Talk about what we're going to see here in the next coming uh, minutes here, Tom. Well, we're going to see the, the command commander of the fight in 69 he's going to be leading it here and he's also going to be having a piper with him so that would be what we will open the bread with here and uh, you know this is what we open the bread with now since 1851 and the reason why we opened the bread with uh, this kind of situation was in 1851 there were a lot of problems in new york and there were a lot of people who didn't like the irish and uh, the parade committee went to uh, the fight in 69 and said, hey, will you lead the parade and clean out all those bad boys that are along the avenue? And they said yes, and it became a tradition, so it's, it's last. They've they're done a good job, Gus. And they've they started in the really 1850s, good. but also had a strong presence during the Civil War as well. Yeah, they have, they have been the fighting Irish. Is, it, you know, people say you can't call them fighting Irish. You can. It's not a derogatory term. It was given to the regiment by Robert E. Lee in the Battle of Fredericksburg in 1863. It's great to have you back here on Fifth Avenue as the Fighting 69 stream by us. But remember, you know, this parade is run by volunteers. And nobody gets paid in this parade, and it takes an awful lot of money to put it on. And if you would like to subscribe, if you would like to throw in a few bucks to keep the parade going, you have... Uh, I I believe it's called a QR code. I'm not really that up to date on all these things, but the QR code is there. You want to click onto that there, and you can make a donation. Uh, Harry Byrne and Sean Lane would be forever grateful to you, so that, that's a good place to give your money. Make sure the parade keeps going every year. Thank you. You are state-of-the-art, Tommy. Thank no you. doubt about that. And talk about that. The work of the parade goes on all year. We see it. We see the, the, the fruition of all that work today, but this is a year-long effort, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> putting together something like this, I mean, I mean, when you, you imagine this parade is going to go on, uh, the last units will be gone up the avenue by 5 o'clock this evening. And uh, there's so many things that has to be done, so many T's that have to be crossed and I's that have to be dotted just to get it on the avenue. And uh, you, can, you can see, I mean, uh, uh, the fight in 69 behind us here, there's so many of them this year that have been missing because they have been deployed overseas for the last couple of years. So they were back at Mass in St. Patrick's this morning, and it was a fantastic occasion. And talk a bit about that, Tommy, because before the parade kicks off, there's, there's Mass at the Cathedral, before people are kind of gathering the 40s. What goes on before the parade actually gets going? Uh, well, actually, the aides all had a breakfast this morning at 6 o'clock down there in the Pig and Whistle, and uh, it was a great breakfast for the, the aides who are uh, the aides to the Grand Marshal, and she was there as well. And then it was over to St. Patrick's for the Mass, and St. Patrick's was, it was full. Tickets were just not available, and uh, the Cardinal always is so nice to the Irish on that day. And uh, I have the great pleasure of being one of the... Uh, readers that morning and it's a great pleasure to stand up there and know that there's 2,500 people down there who have attended Mass for St. Patrick. You start to see some of these are families of the 69th going there and that's something worth noting that so many people do bring their families to this event to march along with their different groups or different civic groups, political groups, whatever you might have. Oh yeah, I mean that's one of the things about this parade, Gus, you know, and there's Joe Brady, 33 years and there's last year's Grand March and Kevin and Joe marching up the avenue there and um, you know, there's so many families get together. They have particular spots on the avenue where they meet. Maybe they only meet Christmas and St. Patrick's, but they do meet. So it is a big family thing. And here's, here's their first music. Let's hear them. That's the 42nd Infantry Division. It's uh, an Army National Guard, the Rainbow Division. And there's Regimental Sergeant is Major Thomas Seaford, and they've been marching here on this parade for 30 years. At least he has, anyhow. 
And just reading off the drum there, so the Wontaw Pipe Band. We'll see so many different bands from around the Tri-State area. And these are groups that Tommy are rehearsing and working all year long. And it's a real uh, real community builder, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. And, uh, you know, they're always willing, if you want to become a pipe if you want to become a pipe player, the Wontaw American Legion Pipe Band would love to have you. George Avilas is the band manager. All right, we're going to be right back in just a moment here. You're watching the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and we'll be right back right after this. And uh, we're looking at the parade here. This comes up Fifth Avenue, our first big band, and uh, that's the band that's going to be leading the, the Grand Marshal up. So uh, it'll be uh, very here, very soon she will be here on top of us. But earlier today, uh, we talked to Cardinal Dolan out in front of St. Patrick's Cathedral. I'm joined right now by Archbishop Timothy Dolan. What an amazing event, one of my favorite moments. Here's your oh. Easter bonnet. Right. <laughs> so they say, you know, they say St. Patrick's Day can be the last day of winter or the first day of spring. It's sort of that bridge, you know, and I think we got first day of spring. What do you think? I think it's So it's always the Irish say St. Patrick's Day is sort of the uh, preparation for Easter. And don't you think it is? I do. You got it in spring when the when nature is lush and alive and growing and the sun is coming out, the day is lighter. And that's what it's all about, hope, isn't it? Ireland, Ireland has had thousands of years of reasons to be this, uh, not hope, desperation. We never give it up. Always resilience, always hope, always grit. And that's what we celebrate, don't you think? It is and such an amazing that. time. Don't we you do. Think we need that. It's deep in the human heart. So, and we need it at this time of year with all the trauma going on in the world. Hey, everybody, <laughs> don't you think? Can you go get me a, a car beef sandwich? Well, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Your order is in right now. now. You're in. Way to go. Thanks <laughs> Thank for your you. coverage. Thank you. Thanks for, for being here. You, we love you. You are a blessing. All right, you're a blessing. Way to go. Hi. Back Thanks to you in the booth. You know the chaplain here. For the and we're back here, and uh, it's a great day on Fifth Avenue. The music is coming loud and clear. The Muskego High School marching band from Muskego, Wisconsin, is coming past us here. And of course, this parade means so much to so many people and so many different things. I mean, I, I had a neighbor who uh, passed away recently, James uh, Richardson. He marched in this parade for many years uh, with his uh, twins. They were going to Providence University. And unfortunately, uh, he has passed away. And Eileen, and his wife, is watching the day and commemorating uh, James and uh, his friend Phil Calmary as well. And we also have Matt Kelly here in the booth. Unfortunately, Matt's mom passed away recently, and we're very sorry. We commiserate with him, Gus. Of course, this is a time where a lot of people do look back and uh, you know commiserate oh. and think about their families. But you have someone in your life who's on the screen right now. That's your wife. Who is that? that that's oh, your wife right over there. Look, that's my wife. Yes. Oh yeah. What is she doing over there? I don't know what she's doing over there, but she's marching. <laughs> she, she's definitely marching in the parade. And the Grand Marshal as well yeah. over there. And Sean Lane is with him as well. Sean Lane and uh, they're stressing in the middle there. And uh, she's the aide at large today, the Grand Marshal passing up. Up Ballina! Tommy, why don't you tell us a little about the Grand Marshal who's on our screen right now? Oh, Maggie Temini, she's turned out to be a fantastic Grand Marshal. One of the few Grand Marshals, or one of the few people I ever knew, Gus, that got a scholarship from uh, Iona to play basketball. She came over here as a basketball player, and now she's Grand Marshal here. She's also, you know, she's the CEO of Heineken, and uh, she has done a really fantastic job with her career. So many of our family are here today. They've come out. She's from Ballina in County Mayo, and, uh, you know, there's been a, a lot of controversy about how we should address her. We call her Maggie Timony. You know, it yes. looks like Timony, but mm -hmm. it's Timony. So that's the way to do it in Mayo. And if Maggie says that's the way to do it, that's the way you're going to do it. And she goes by Maggie. Yeah, like, she, like my sister, Maggie. She definitely yes, does. Yeah, All right. Definitely does. What are the responsibilities of the Grand Marshal? Because it is—it's not just marching up the marching up Fifth Avenue. A lot of appearances going. Oh, to this. there's a lot of appearances. There's a lot of appearances. We were looking, you know, a little while ago. We 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 talked about that code, and that's part of what the Grand Marshal does too—is raise money uh, for to keep the parade, keep them on Fifth Avenue. I mean, we had a fantastic night the other night down uh, when the parade put on the gala, and uh, Sean Lane and uh, Hillary burned it. Uh, 
a fantastic job with it. And, uh, you know, you get a, a group of people who put money into keeping the parade on the avenue. They want to have the parade on the avenue, and this is the way they have to go about it. And uh, we, we definitely enjoyed ourselves the other night, Gus. We're going to listen in town to the Bergen County Pipe and Drops. So are we. We'll be right back in just a moment with more of the St. Patrick's Day Parade. We are back with you here covering the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Tommy, worth noting, people looking at the calendar, today's not technically St. Patrick's Day. Could you tell us a little bit why we march today and, and not tomorrow? Well, tomorrow is a religious day. Mm -hmm. We believe in uh, attending Mass and uh, if we don't march on, on Sundays at all. We've never have. And, uh, it, this, they do in some parts of the world. And but some communities don't do even it. have yeah. it. But this, the, the big parade here in New York is, is never on a Sunday. Never so that's on why a we're Sunday. doing it today. No, uh, a, going on right now, we've had a lot of people. They've been kind of staging in the mid-40s, and they're making their way up Fifth Avenue. It's kind of giving the lay of land here. We're at Fifth and 64th. So this is the main viewing stand. But by the time they get to us, these participants, 150,000 of them this year, they've already been marching for about 20 blocks. So we seem a little, little old in the action here, but more groups starting to come their way as well. But people, Tommy, have been gathering in the city. I don't know when you were coming in this morning. Already, like by, I was asking, you know, around 7, 8 a.m., people were already lining up along Fifth Avenue. They've had the barricades up for a few days now. Well, to be honest, Gus, when the clock went off at 4.45 this morning, I wanted to pick it up and throw it out the window, but I was being kind to my neighbours. I didn't want them to hear it as well. I mean, it's an early start on St. Patrick's morning because as a, as an aide, uh, trust, I had the breakfast, I said, at 6 o'clock. And then uh, I just want to give a shout-out to all Please, of the yes. aides that went by. Uh, Monsignor Donald Sacano, uh, Jack uh, McCarrick, Bridget A. Rusha. Hernandez, Joanne Gunderson, Yvonne uh, Sheehan, Margaret Peggy Flynn, Paul R. Dowd, Reverend Henry Reed, Sean Walsh, Donald Higgins, Michael J. O'Reilly, Edward T. Kenter, Sheila Clancy McCarthy, Tressa Goodwin Smith, William E. Winston, the uh, Deputy Inspector William Gallagher and Lieutenant John J. Mara. I've done that, Gus, because in it's 2000... Quite a, quite a cast. Yeah, well, people. in 2008, the, or 2008, when I was Grand Marshal, I had never taken into consideration how big a day it was for the aides yes. and their families. This is a huge... It's a huge honour to be an aide. And I've found it out, you know, and I, I was Grand Marshal in 2008, and I mean, that's the biggest honour you can get. And I've told you that story a million times. Somebody said, we excited? And I said, no, I wasn't, but I was shaving, and I said to Trust, I said, do you see my glasses? Yeah, she said, you're looking through them. That was how exactly you were I was. A little, little nervous. Yeah, was how, did, how did they tell you, by the way? I mean, was it a surprise? Oh, or did, you get a, did they call you? Did you get a letter? Is it a meeting? Or like, how, how did they well, share at, that kind of news? At that time, John Dunleavy was the chairman of the parade. Oh, sure, yeah. God be good to him. And he said, I'd like to meet you in, in uh, Riverdale Steakhouse up with Terry Connacht. And he said, I've something I want to discuss with you. And I figured it was something about the parade. I never figured in my stratosphere that I would be Grand Marshal of the St. Patrick's Day Parade. I come from a little place called Knock Bridge. We've got ten houses in it. And I'm saying to myself, hey, I'm going to get to lead the biggest parade. And he said, you know, he said, we're considering, he said, having you as the Grand Marshal for uh, the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Now I said, John, pull the other one. I said, what do you really want me out you here for? You didn't believe it at all, Not did a you? Chance. you? thought it was a Not joke. a chance. In fact, I think when I was walking up the avenue, I still hadn't believed it until I got here. And the other thing I notice is we start to see some of the bands come. The number of people that are coming up already and saying hello to you. This is always a major feature of the parade. We're looking at the New York City Police Department police band, and this sets off a major part of the march when we see a lot of New York City's finest come up here, Fifth Avenue. Tommy, the police and the Irish in this town, they have a, they have a long legacy, don't they? Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, where would you get police force like there is here in New York City? And they're unbelievable. And, uh, well, Sean Lane makes sure that he gets them up at the front of the parade every year. It's, it's, it's a great thrill to have them up here. And there's several different police bands. There's the Holy Names society. We're going to see them all here now in a few minutes. You know, They'll all come marching by us. And you say the different, the holy name, there's also the like the Emerald Society as well, the yeah, sort of groups? Yeah, there's the Emerald Society, and uh, this one here is the New York City Department Marching Band. It's the police. And let's, let's give it a listen here.
the New York City Police Department band. Uh, Mayor Eric Adams is marching near them, and he's in our area right now. Talk to some of the people in the crowd there as well. Which is always a tradition to have the local politicians march in the parade. We'll have more of the New York City State Patrick State Parade after this. you here on WNBC and we're going to head over to Sarah Wallace who is joined by the mayor now. Good morning, Sarah. Well, good morning, Gus. I am here with the mayor and the police commissioner. Tell us what this day means to New York City and really the world. Oh, no, it means so much. You know, uh, New York City has the largest population of Irish Americans in the entire country. We like to say that we're the Dublin of America because of those numbers are so high and it just shows the excitement lining a park this entire walkway. It's just amazing to see the energy and the pride. And this year was dedicated to women. Yes, we know about the corporate women leaders, the athletes, but really we should think about the real women in our lives. That's our moms and our grandmothers. They made us who we are. And as I was walking down with the commissioner, you know, you hear a lot of noise about, um, you know, public safety in the city. This is the safest big city in America. We inherited a city where crime was up 40 percent. That is not the reality. It's down. Our subways are safe. This is great. Let's continue to enjoy the Irish uh, community. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Let's march on. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, for being here. And it is a beautiful day. Yes, and sir. thanks to all the police officers for keeping yes. everyone That's safe. I'd like to do, thank all the men and women who are out there making sure everyone is safe. We're going to do our job. We want you to do your job and enjoy St. Patrick's Day with your family. God bless. And it is a beautiful day. Back to you right now in the booth. Okay, Sarah, thank you very much. A very safe, very happy day. And the Mayor talking about the women in our lives. How appropriate that we now turn to a major woman in your life <laughs> say hello Teresa good morning you have been marching for the last little bit tell us about your morning so far what you've been up to Stay to you, Gus, and to Tommy, and to Sarah Wallace, and to everybody that's, that's out there. My morning has been absolutely amazing. From start to finish, the minute I got out this morning, a little girl from Cove, out of Rock in Ireland, did I ever believe that I could be marching up the green line here in New York City, led by Maggie Timothy and all the wonderful, wonderful aides. What kind of a reception did you get down the block? Oh my goodness, it was amazing. It was like, a, it was just like walking the very traffic. <laughs> Tressa, I think we're going to. Tressa, I think we're going to swap out your microphone, and because uh, we want to hear you loud and clear here, uh, so, so we're going to get that figured out as we watch some more of the groups come up here along Fifth Avenue. Yes. Well, we have the police uh, department, Emerald Society pipe band. They even have three members from the Gaelic football team. That's what Brian Green tells me now. The Texas Billy Green, Kevin Long, and John O'Hagan. Let's hear how the sound goes. We've been listening to the Emerald Society there. We'll have more of the St. Patrick's Day Parade coming up in just a moment. And we're back with you on a beautiful Saturday morning for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. The whole gang is here finally up in the booth. Tressa, how was your march up Fifth Avenue? My march up Fifth Avenue was something I could only dream about. I really could. A, little, a young woman from Cove, County Cork in Ireland, marching up Fifth Avenue on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, it was just amazing. It was humbling. I had, and I have to reach out to Sean Lane and Hilary Byrne for, for giving me this honour. It was absolutely fantastic. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. I hope you 
you're enjoying your day as much as I am. Happy St. Patrick's Day, Tommy and Gus and Sarah. Uh, we're and talking about Irish eyes are smiling. Boy, is it my imagination or is she smiling even more so than normal? You, you look definitely. fantastic. I can feel the wonderful <laughs> energy. I also know down by the cathedral with Sarah Wallace, who has made her way up to our viewing stand. She's just behind us here and she joins us down with a guest. Sarah? Well, Gus, I'm standing right here now with the international president of the Transport Workers Union, John Samuelson. Talk to me as we're watching this parade in the background. Yeah. Tell me what this means to you to be here and your work. Well, an absolutely amazing day today as the, uh, the man who runs the Transport Workers Union in America and in the Caribbean. So we were founded by the Irish. In the, in the great diaspora that happened in the aftermath of the Irish Civil War, the tragedy of the Civil War, the hard men and women that came, that fought the partition of Ireland, they came to the streets of New York City, and they fought the bosses in their screws, and they organized this incredible New York City subway system. And here we are 90 years later, across the entire country, running the biggest airline union in the country. We have um, 155,000 of us in rail, airline, public transit. So this is an amazing day for us to come back celebrate our Irish roots. I'm from Brooklyn. I never left, but we're all over the country now, and that's a direct result of the hard organizing work of those men and women that came here 90 years ago. And we so appreciate all the work that you do to keep this city moving. Enjoy the day. Thanks yep. so much. Back to you in the booth. Sarah, thank you very much. Appreciate that. She'll be joining us along uh, the next couple of hours with various guests, and we appreciate her being here. She's, I always say she's the one float in the parade. Yeah. She introduced the Cardinal, and they put her in a golf cart, and they zoom her up there. And when I used to be the reporter, I always said, that's the only float, so wave like crazy. It is something like so many people are out there waving, connecting. Tommy, you were talking about how it really is. It's kind of a reunion vibe to the day. Oh, yeah. There's, there's no question about it. I mean, people meet people, and people, you know, they, they're, there's so many different people out here from Ireland. In fact, uh, we got a award this morning. There's two people who came out, especially from Cavan, to march with Cavan today. So that just goes to show you what it's like. And you know, as we were talking there, the uh, Emerald Society of the Police Department came up the avenue, and they are involved so much with the Irish. And and they even have a, an Irish football team. And Brian Green tells me they're going to play up in uh, Rockland this year on the 21st of September. I am, I announced the game last year, Gus, uh -huh. and it's really that much, I swear to God, I grew two inches. That's, that's a What does fact. that take you up to now? I won't. Well, I should, I should. It takes me up a little bit, member. Okay. Right. Act, active members of the team that marched by today, I want to say hello to them. Uh, the Chief of Detectives, Joseph Kenny. The club president is Michael Greeny, and the sergeant is Brandon Heap. So, there you go. There you go, and that, that was the New York PD ML Society, and they, they started March the 16th, 1953. We'll have more of the St. Patrick's Day Parade coming up in just a moment here on WNBC. The St. Patrick's Day Parade is brought to you locally by Aer Lingus, providing nonstop service from New York to Ireland with connections to over 30 cities across Europe. Book a great fare now at AerLingus.com. Enjoy a warm Irish welcome as soon as you step on board your Aer Lingus flight. We love bringing people to amazing places. Hit the great outdoors and see for yourself our breathtaking coastlines, ancient castles and world-class golf courses. Listen to live music and feast on mouth-watering local dishes. So fly with us from New York to Ireland and Europe. At Aer Lingus, you're very welcome. <laughs> 